everyone. I'm Steele McGonigal. And I'm Kara O'Brien. Welcome to Destination Tomorrow. On this special episode of Destination Tomorrow, we'll look back at the first century of powered flight and the pioneers who designed and built the world's first flying machines. And we'll discover what the future might hold for aviation. Throughout history, man has always been intrigued with the idea of flight. However, most early aviation pioneers could not imagine flight as we know it today. With limited understanding of basic aerodynamic principles, many of these early pioneers attempted to build flying machines that were shaped like and emulated the flight of birds. The crude structures that they built generally relied on feathers and flapping wings as a catalyst for flight, ultimately leaving a trail of broken men and machines. History is inundated with stories of these birdmen jumping from towers and cliffs in a vain attempt to fly. Flight attempts gradually moved from small feathered devices toward larger structures, yet many of these attempts still ended in humiliation and sometimes even death. However, with all of these failures, early inventors were building a foundation of knowledge for the future of flight. Although many had tried to build machines that could fly, all earlier powered flight attempts had failed before the flight at Kitty Hawk in 1903. Though the Wright brothers were the first to fly a heavier-than-air machine, people had been airborne long before the Wright's first flight. The Montgolfier brothers conducted the first public display of a hot air balloon flight near Paris in June of 1783. Balloons were also used extensively during the American Civil War to observe enemy positions. But balloons could not be controlled very easily, so the search continued to find a system that would allow heavier than air powered flight. In the late 1700s, Sir George Cayley of England helped define the problem of powered flight when he observed the problems of lift and drag of birds. Through a series of mathematical calculations and use of a device called the whirling arm, he tested numerous wing designs and eventually published many of his findings, providing a solid basis for flight pioneers of the future. One of the most notable pioneers that profited from this information was the German glider designer Otto Lilienthal. Lilienthal was often referred to as the Birdman because his glider designs were generally shaped like birds or bats. In his lifetime, he built 16 different glider designs, testing them from a man-made hill near his home. Unfortunately, he died August 10, 1896, after the glider he was testing spun out of control. His last words were, sacrifices must be made. Building off of the work of others, Orville and Wilbur Wright began working towards their goal of building the first heavier-than-air vehicle. In June of 1899, the Assistant Secretary of the Smithsonian received a letter from Wilbur Wright asking for reading material that related to heavier-than-air flight. In his letter, Wilbur wrote that he was an enthusiast, but not a crank, with some pet theories of his own about flight. A few weeks after his letter was received, Wilbur received a package from the Smithsonian containing reading material and suggestions referencing virtually every text in existence that mentioned flight. With this information in hand, the Wright brothers started their crusade to build the first viable heavier-than-air ship. To help us understand how the Wright brothers accomplished their goals and how their early planes flew, Johnny Alonzo finds out how it works. <laughs> 